<laughs> and we are just booting it. Some days as a motoring journalist are better than others, and today is one of the better days. I've got the new BMW M4 behind me. We're here in Austria. I've got three days with the car to get back to the UK. We're going to see some places, look at some bizarre landmarks, and generally try out the car. En route, I will test the new car's engine, not only for speed, but also for sound. After all, a lot of M car fans are worried that going from a naturally aspirated 4 litre V8 to a 3 litre straight six with forced induction will affect the car's character. All I needed was somewhere to really experience the noise. Do you want to hear what the new M4 sounds like with its turbocharged engine? Well, we've got a tunnel ahead of us, got the window down. This is the true test. Doesn't sound as good as the old V8 though, does it? What really matters though is how the car sounds to you as the driver. And BMW has tried to enhance the noise by playing the best sounds of the engine through the car's stereo speakers. So here's a taste of what it sounds like from within the cabin. Windows up. So I'll knock it down. Two gears. Oh yeah. Struggling for traction. Plum heck! Oh my god, we're going really fast. I'm going to break. So what do you think about that? It's it's definitely fruity, isn't it? But there's just something slightly artificial about it, isn't there? So then, the move to turbo power has robbed the mighty M car of some of its noise. But this is a small price to pay for what has been gained in terms of performance, as I was about to find out once the kamikaze cyclist was out of the way. Okay, so this engine may be smaller than in the old V8, but you've got 425 horsepower, which is about 11 horsepower more than in the old car. You've also got 550 newton meters of torque instead of 400 newton meters of torque, and as a result, 0 to 62 miles an hour takes just 4.1 seconds instead of 4.6 seconds. And I've got launch control engaged, and we're going to see how quick we can get to 62. So here we go. <laughs> Pretty quickly. That's that's a lot of speed there. Oh, yeah, that was quick. <laughs> BMW says the M4 has been tuned so it will always provide the same performance, whether you're at sea level or up a mountain where the air is thin. And as I headed down from the Alps, the car's £57,000 price tag seemed totally reasonable considering the work M Division has done to it. Right, and let's get a little bit technical and talk about the engine, shall we? So, if you look here, you'll see that the intercooler is on the very top of the engine, and that means that it, the air doesn't have so far to travel before going into the inlet. It's actually cooled by big radiators just down there, you see, and they liquid cool the air, the, air, the charged air there, and it helps boost the power. Sorry for talking like that, but it is a little bit geeky. Another thing to point out here, if you look around the engine, there's this big brace. And that's because BMW have done a lot of work stiffening up this car chassis. So there's extra bracing throughout the car. And even at the back, you've got no bushes for the rear subframes. And that stops the axle moving around under acceleration. And overall, this car is 35% more stiff than the chassis of the normal 4 Series. And that improves its responsiveness and handling. The M4 also has the latest M differential, which sends traction where you need it most. While the steering has been calibrated to be super sharp, yet not too much that it makes the car feel edgy. In fact, the M4 is a very easy and hugely entertaining car to drive, and so I was able to really make the most of the brilliant roads in southern Germany as I headed to my first destination. It seems that Germany is littered with places that have funny names. So we're cruising along the autobahn doing 90 miles an hour and I've got some young hooligan up my bottom. It's got a sticker on its windscreen, yeah. Makes his car go a little bit quicker. 
Seeing as we're going through some roadworks, this is quite a good time for me to talk you through some of the features on this car. For instance, you can alter the weight of the steering between three different settings by pressing this button down here. There we go, one, two, three. And it goes from Comfort, Sport, to Sport Plus. And Comfort is a little bit too light. Sport Plus feels just artificially heavy. So I'll go for the middle one, Sport. Then there's the dampers, once again, three settings. So you can have Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus. And I generally just have it in Comfort when you're driving normally. And then firm it all the way up to Sport Plus when you want to hoon it around some bends. Then there's the throttle response, once again, three settings. And you can either have it efficient. Why would you want that? It just makes it feel all soggy and not as fast as it could be. So you just bypass Sport and go for Sport Plus and have it with the sharpest throttle response you can get. The other thing you can change is the speed of the gear shifts. Now, if you have it in the first setting, it's all right. Put it in the second setting, you get a nice little jolt when you change up. Put it in the third setting, and you get this smack in your back when you change it, which is completely unnecessary. and makes the car kind of shimmy a bit when you're really caning it. So you put that in the middle setting. You can mix and match all of those and save your favorite presets here using the M1 and M2 buttons, so you can just easily access them if you like. So there we go, I've got the car set up perfectly for me now, and obviously I've got my obligatory bag of Harry Bows there, which are essential for a long journey. And I can just sit back and relax until we get to our next destination. As I drove along the Autobahn, a lot of people started taking pictures. I wondered if they recognised me from my videos. Sadly, it was only the M4 they were interested in. Even Mercedes drivers seemed to like it. He looks a bit young to be driving, doesn't he? Not doing too badly at that age, being a, a Merc E-Class. So here we are on a de-restricted bit of autobahn and what better time to experience this car's performance. So knock it down, floor it, and it's quite interesting how the, the engine revs. Yes, yeah, so after about five and a half thousand RPM, you've got your peak power of 425 bhp and it just stays there right to the red line. So you don't get a building crescendo of performance, but what it does mean is that when you change up, at 7,000 RPM, and it drops you down to five and a half. You're still in your peak power, so the acceleration is phenomenal. I mean, we are flying, and I think it's hit the limit. So this is a very quick way to get around. My foot is to the floor, and we are just booting it. I love Germany. I love German cars. <laughs> <laughs> the brakes are plumbing good as well, thank God. But while great on the Autobahn, how would the brakes fare in a city? Luxembourg city to be precise. After all, this car has the optional carbon ceramic brakes, and these can sometimes feel a bit grabby at lower speeds. Thankfully, the BMWs didn't. Really, the only disappointment was that Luxembourg was a lot less exciting than the M4. I'll say one of the things that's really impressive about this M4 is, you know, you can hurtle it down an autobahn, you can throw it down some lanes, and then it's just at home, really, cruising through city centre. Surprisingly comfy, actually, and I really like these M Sport seats. They just support you so well. It's a surprisingly relaxing car to drive when you're not on it. BMW has given the M4 a turbo engine for improved efficiency and say it can go 108 miles further on a tank of fuel than the old V8. Later in my journey, I will see just how close I can get to the official economy figure of 34 miles per gallon, although what I was about to do next wasn't really conducive to an eco test. As you can probably see from this big sign just up there, we have come to the Nürburgring. And you're going to take this car for a spin around the Nordschleife, which incidentally is where BMW spend a lot of time testing the M3 and the M4. I've never been on the Nordschleife before, so this is going to be my first 
ever go on the track. But what a way to do it in this new M4. But just as I was about to head out on track, they closed it. Oh no. What the? What? <laughs> How typical is that? He loved doing that as well, didn't he? Still, this gave me an opportunity to film some beauty shots of the M4. It's available with some unique colours, all of which, in true M style, are named after a racing circuit. This is Austin yellow and it looks pretty sweet, contrasting with the carbon roof. While outside and in, there are plenty of clues as to what you're driving. Just as we were heading out on track, I noticed this E92 M3 and I thought it'd be fun to put the M4 next to it. There's an interesting fact, the, the new car is actually lighter than the old car. If you get this one, the M4, with the manual gearbox, it weighs under 1,500 kilograms. This one has the DCT dual clutch, so it's slightly heavier, it's 1,537 kilograms, but that is still pretty light, and it's got, like the old M3, it does have the carbon fiber roof, but it's got even more weight-saving measures. You've got an aluminum bonnet, you've got carbon fiber reinforced plastic for the boot lid. Also, the, the prop shaft, it's not steel, it's made out of carbon fiber reinforced plastic as well, to get less rotating mass, but also that contributes to the whole bringing down the weight of the car. And because it's lighter and more powerful, the new M4 is actually 15 seconds a lap quicker around the Nordsch life than the old E92 M3. So here we are, about to go on the Nordsch life, and I hope I don't turn into one of those Nordsch life numpties and crash within two seconds of getting on the track. I suppose if I did, the video would be a whole lot more popular, wouldn't it? Probably get millions of hits, but yeah, I want to bring this car back safely, so let's see how we get on. Actually, getting on the track seemed a little too easy. Is that it? We're just off, really. <laughs> This is bonkers. My God. As a Nürburgring noob and not knowing the circuit, I obviously took things very steady and so was way off the M4's lap record of 7 minutes and 52 seconds. Still, I was very glad to have such a fine handling, beautifully balanced and confidence inspiring car to lose my Nordschleife cherry in. Even though the M4 has been developed on the Nürburgring, most owners will never go there. And as I passed through Holland and into Belgium, my thoughts return to how BMW have made this M car a better ownership proposition than ever before. So when I started driving this car about 900 miles ago, I reset the trip computer to find out what its average MPG would be over the course of this journey. And looking down at it now, it says 23.5 miles per gallon, which considering the car is claimed to be able to do 34 miles per gallon, well, it's about 10 miles per gallon down, isn't it? But don't forget, I've been maxing this thing out on the Autobahn. I haven't been going slow elsewhere in it either, and we've been caning it around the Nürburgring. And actually, that 23.5 MPG is pretty much the same claim figure for the old E92 M3. That was claimed to do about 24.5 miles per gallon. Actually, as I headed into France and onto the tunnel, the average economy began to rise and would eventually be almost 25 miles per gallon by the end of my 1,000 mile journey. But before I got there, I had a border to cross. And it can sometimes raise questions when you're driving an expensive car that doesn't actually belong to you. This is the French passport control. They do not give a toss. Hello, Frenchies. Do you want to check my passport? Do you care? No you're all having dinner. Okay, so I found one absolutely massive flaw with the 4 Series. And for this very reason, there's no way I'd want one. Look, there's nowhere to really hang it. Your Flexi Plus ticket. Oh yeah, there we go, it actually works. I'll take it up, no. It's just too big. Stay. Done. 
good. Oh, here we go. Oh, because I've been fanning around now, I bet you they want to search us. Hello. Hello there. Two of you travelling? Yeah. Don't stop us, don't stop us, don't stop us. We are fine. We have no drugs or guns. Apart from the fact that my passenger clearly doesn't have his seatbelt on. I had to take great care not to scratch the standard 19-inch alloy wheels boarding the narrow channel tunnel transporter. As I headed off the train, I was interested to see how the M4 felt to drive in the UK. One thing I've noticed is that the, the tyres on certain surfaces, listen to this, make an absolute racket. Also, it's good to test the suspension out on uh, more bumpy roads. Generally, it's quite comfortable, but when you do hit a bit of a more heavy bump, you get a bit of a jolt, especially at the back, because obviously you haven't got any bushes where the rear subframe is mounted onto the rest of the body, and so you do get a bit of a jolt occasionally. But still, overall, it's a comfy car to travel in. If, as you can hear, a little bit noisy at times from those big tyres. Actually, as I reached my journey's end, I was feeling surprisingly fresh, even though I'd been behind the wheel for hours on end, and it was getting close to midnight. So I've finally come to the end of the journey. I've done a, about a thousand miles in this car and well, what can I tell you about it? It's a great all-round sports car. It's surprisingly comfortable. It's got a brilliant chassis. I mean, it's, it really does handle exceptionally well. Those common ceramic brakes are absolutely awesome. Now, some people might claim that the, the engine lacks a little bit of character compared to the old V8, but you cannot argue with its performance. In fact, it got us here a little bit quicker than we thought it would. And you know, I said at the beginning of the video, we're gonna have it for three days, when well, it's only taken two days to get here. So with this last remaining day, we're gonna put it in a track battle against one of its rivals. And I've got a feeling, whatever it's gonna be racing against, this is probably going to win. Click on the video windows to watch our track battle of the M4 against the Audi RS5 and our M5 700 mile review. Click on the play icon to watch our latest video review and on our logo to subscribe to our channel.